in this sense, uh, we talk about the UEEN0039 capstone, prepare design, install, inspect the test and electric installation. So that before you are uh, connecting any supply to the electric installation, you have to do the testing and verification. So that firstly, you have to inspect, you have to do the visual inspection. Visual inspection is uh, whether your uh, installation and electrical connections are or okay or not. Also, the any uh, any defect, any uh, any risk to uh, get a damage, and any clearance from the danger danger any danger you have to uh, inspect. Passive visual inspection is important aspect. After that, you also have to test the continuity of the main art and the bond. So that main art uh, the system continuity and the bond need to be test. All the art resistance, all the body need to be test. Also, you have to test the continuity and quality of the protective arcs. Protective arcs also they need to be test and also polarity. Continuity of the polarity or neutral, you have polarity need to be test. Also, the follow evidence. So the follow evidence also need to check. Continuity and polarity at this switch and wire. After that, you have to test the insulation resistance. Insulation resistance need to be test. After that, you have to measure the follow evidence. Some may polarity, consumer may polarity, intermix circuit. So whether circuits are correct, these are correct or not. Then polarity and the circuit connection equipment. Those things need to be checked. So this is a testing and verification check for the uh, electric gas installation. So the, in this case, I will have to visually inspect and conduct the same testing. So in this case, you have to use a, you can use a this table. Is there any apart from a light scarring to the give a sheet? Is a plug damage? For example, gazing crack on a pin van. Are the adequate joists including the table joists in the cable? Is the color insulation of the internet cables goes showing where the end of the plug? Does the appliance prior to have been subject to the condition for which it is not suitable? For example, is where all accessories are going to break it? Is the damage to the external casing of the equipment or are there loose screws or the past? Etc. Is the evidence of the overheating, the, for example, biomass or a discolonization? Discoloration is the main on off switch damage. Does it operate incorrectly? Though they have to be checked up fastly. So, this is the portable electric equipment you have to check over there. And also, the, uh, if the enemies are just heaven, in this case, uh, are, uh, they, they, they can cause a danger, they will need to be taken out. And also the general electric gas inspection will be performed. Visual inspection for electric gas equipment. So in this case, a flexible cost in full condition. Look for the cast, aggression or damage. External components or casing are not damaged. They may, this may form the part of the insulation. Power extension cost and cars and spread from the other hazards such as the liquid mechanical action or traffic areas. Cover gas control lines or mechanical safety features are in good condition. Power outlets and the power box are not overloaded. Costs are key away from the traffic areas. Electric costs and the wirings are not key under the not kept under the carpets where they are subject to wear and tear. Electric costs and the wirings are not run through the windows or doors where they are subject to abrasion. Double adapters are not used. Power box should be used. Bar radiators and a pair of loose lamps are not used for hidden purpose. Appropriate electric equipment are used in wet areas such as the all out skin and the toilets. Only designated electric applied equipment and extension costs are used. 
in area where the which contain the dangerous or the hazardous of material, primary explosive and corrosive. Those things are have to check for the general electric gas and condition. After that, you have to do the continue the main and port. So this is the you use that this um other system is that. So the why is the continuity is our test? The arc continuity test is designed to test the resistance or the protective arc of the appliance and all the supply lead. It is measured between the any accessible other parts and the arc in other parts. So in this case, are the any arc in other parts and also the accessible arc you have to measure with the omega. So this also the based on the O law. So then we have to use a 12 volt maxima. Currently, is 100 to the 200 milli MBR. In this case, uh, if you use the 12 volt maxima, that's uh, currently 10 MBR. 12 volt maxima, that's currently 100 times the rated currently applies for 25 MBR, which is greater. This is the also used, utilized for the bond test. So this is the body and the current uh, to be utilized to do the bond test. So the most of the portable appliances are the multimeter should be able to perform the skin test. So skin test is used for the detecting the poor condition or acquisita and changes or update. What do you do to die? Bond is a useful for the defending the DDP. For example, break in the strength of the ash data or the connecting that can handle the maximum voltage current. So in this case, you also need to check the bond test. So the players are there maybe that the system to the current flow energy combat to heat. So therefore, the, the heat may be great enough to cause the plane level to map. This is fine that you have to measure the system. For example, once are the arc connection to change the apply the current, so it can happen the uh, high resistance and also that it can cause the heat. The second one is a connection of RP is a high in place only a huge strength. RP is a too small. So in this case, this eyes are not under attain. So that it cannot uh, allow the current to flow to the arc. So R is a very high. In this case, you also need to check test. So this is why there are two common examples of the NIDA test or the D test. So in this case, I would have to read it. The AS and then 376, you know, appendix C need to be the bar. So this is for the how to read the test. So this is the test code. So this is for the how to measure the test here. One uh, terminal connected to the RP and another two terminal connected to the main art. So this is the P and main art and then we have to measure the system. This is the way you have to measure the other system. So the, the protectives are acting as conductor, including the main and supplementary are acting as conductor. Electric mass power is used using the low reading of the omega. Electric mass power is used using the low and main uh, reading omega. The equipment is equal for the running, so there is no single fit value for the system. Also, then we also have to use the continuity of the protective conductor, you have to test. Each measure value, you have to take the measure. So this is called this table. Depending on the length of the cable, so that should be the appropriate measure value. So yeah, this is cable length, this is a cable crossing the area. So this is for the uh, uh, measure value. So this measure value had to be no bound. So how long there's a tobacco data? When the tobacco data are the, we use as there's a uh, wire. So the net wires are resistant and the crossing the area. So we have to know about the cross in the area of the wire and less of the wire and you have to measure the appropriate high resistance. If the dead resistance is uh, too high, in this case, uh, we have should replace uh, this wire. And also the supplementary boarding code that has been installed between a simultaneously accessible A4 or the instantaneous bus or the resistance. In this case, R must be equal to less than the 50 ohm. So in this case, uh, R must be equal to less than the 50 ohm. Divided by IE. So, current divided, three divided by IE, and then you can get the measure of the system. So, this resistance must be less. So, this is the way you have to do. Also, the, uh, in this case, uh, the IEE is a standard regulation, is that this is the uh, 01340 for the uh, 145 MVR, and this is 1340. So, this is for the RS volume. We use that uh, this is gas. So this is the disconnected to the pipeline, the main protective uh, bonding connector, and water pipeline. So in this case, uh, this uh, bonding connector and uh, this pipeline connector, this is the main uh, protective uh, bonding connector. So main uh, protective bonding connector is connected to the uh, water pipeline by using the outlet as well as uh, any uh, other uh, metallic parts. So then the wire joining together these two uh, terminals is uh, this is the main protective bonding connector. 
this may work at a body for that the system that need to be measured by using the omega in this case zero or new instrument have to be utilized to measure it so the zero instrument is in body aspect is so the operation uh, installation operation in this case never this one the main bonding connector so when you are uh, the the sub this is like uh, using in this case never this one the main bonding connector unless supply can be isolated so the supply without isolating the supply you never this one the main bonding connector without isolation pass on light store or list on the electric shop so this is the important before you do this every day you have to isolate the supply and important is that never discounted the main body for the burning for the last because of the it can call the electric rates. The continuity of the uh, circuit protective for the data may be established in the same way. So in this case, uh, this will be a uh, circuit protective for the data. So you see that this is that we use a temporary name between uh, this and this one. You have to try this is from the supply, you take off the wire and give up the, the neutral, and then you have to do the temporary name. And then you have to measure that this and this one, and also they measure that this and this one. So this and this one you measure, and this and this one that you measure. So that by this way also you have to read the wrong. So this the system will be there's a uh, R1, and this and this one the system will be R2. So this R1 R2 you have to read, and then you have to compare R1 R2. You have to compare, and also then we have to find out the R1 R2 value. So this our R2 value must be agree with the uh, like this information. So the and terminology. So in this case, we also see that our supplementary bonnet, the yellow and green color that that connect the accessible media pass on electronic equipment to accessible media pass. So they are the uh, supplementary bonding. We use a yellow and a green connector. They are connected to the accessible media pass. So this is sub supplementary bonding. So these connections are uh, made to prevent the dangerous bonding between two accessible media pass. So any uh, accessible media pass, we have to connect with this uh, uh, green and yellow wire. So this connection is uh, to prevent the uh, dangerous bonding. To Remove the danger of voltage. So, in this, there is a fault. You may need to supplement the bonding for the wrong connector bar or shower. So, in this case, are the, uh, we also have to uh, connect the supplement the bonding for the wrong and uh, for the wrong containers of bus and shower. But only the RCD, if you are RCD protected, you may not need the supplement the bonding. Otherwise, you have to utilize. This is your current device are the sensitive switch device that create the circuit. When it fire the armor. So the circuit protective connectors are the system of connectors so that they are joining together all export connected parts and connecting them to the main adding terminal. So this is for the, the bonding. So you also need to view the whole video. View videos are regarding the uh, protective connector, how to measure the protective connector at the end. Looks like we're all tied up. Looks like we're all tied up. Loser buys lunch. Loser buys lunch. Deal. Right help the right help at the right time can make all. Hello, Yeran. Is it you? 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 Is and goes off to make connections to the metallic water pipe and the metallic gas pipe, but also can go off to the metallic oil pipe, the metallic structure of the building, we've got metal frame building. We see it's here, it's terminated within an MET, so we've got a gas which isn't present in this location, it's somewhere else, and one for water. Often the MET 
AT is not present in the installation and these connections are made within the consumers union itself. However, City and Guild and EAL always instruct us as colleges to have a separate MET. However, we can't just pull out the gas bonding in this case or the water bonding. Those protective bonding conductors cannot be removed with the supply still energised. So let's think about why the thinking is behind that. So if I was to pull out in this case the water bond, so the protective bonding conductor to the water was taken out with the installation still live and there was an earth fault somewhere in the installation. We know from studying in the classroom that under earth fault conditions all earth metal work becomes live. So in this case metal clad socket which is earthed, metal clad consumer unit etc within the installation under earth fault conditions goes live. If we've disconnected the protective bonding conductor to the water under earth fault conditions that wouldn't go live. If I was able to touch adjacent metal work, so for instance the water pipe and the metal clad socket, metal clad consumer unit or some earth metal work in the installation, I would be at a differing potential. No volts would appear in the disconnected water because the protective bonding conductor would be out. However, the metal clad socket, consumer unit, etc. would have a voltage appearing in it. We always discuss that to be up to 50 volts AC. I touch the pipe at zero volts and the metal clad socket at 50 volts. Difference in potential, I receive an electric shock. Therefore, this test must be carried out with the supply isolated. I've isolated in the double pole switch or linked main switch in the tails. I've expressed how to do that in previous video presentations. Equally, you could make the isolation within the consumer's unit itself and again, I've shown that in the previous presentation. The supply is isolated before we start the test. We've isolated the supply here, I've shown it in a previous video presentation. Let's get set up now to measure the resistance of the protective bonding conductor in this installation to a water pipe and to a gas pipe which is elsewhere within the installation. So see how we're going to do that. So I've isolated the supply in this case at the linked main switch or double pole switch in the tails. I've proved the whole installation has been isolated so I'm now able to disconnect the protective bonding conductor from the MET which is remote from the consumer's unit. Remember often these protective bonding conductors will be connected within the consumer's unit itself. So you disconnect the one that's labelled with a W, hoping it's simulating the one for the water, the water pipe being simulated here. The second one has G on it and the gas pipe is elsewhere in the installation. We'll look for that in a few moments. So let's disconnect it from the MET. And now we can make a connection with our own meter from the disconnected protective bonding conductor onto the front of the clamp and then onto the pipe work to prove it is continuous. We expect the reading to be less than 0.05 of an ohm, which is approximately 27 metres of 10 millimetre squared cable, which is in a domestic dwelling. If for some reason you're in a domestic dwelling and your water or gas pipe, etc., are further away than that, you'll find you'll need to increase the size to 16 millimetre squared. Let's see how we're going to carry out the test. So we're all set up now ready to measure the continuity of the protective bonding conductor. As stated in previous presentations, I've set it into the orange scale for measuring resistance in ohms, and I'm using the red and green sections within the top of the Mega MFT. Crocodile clip onto the disconnected water protective bonding conductor, and I'm now going to take a measurement on the front of the clamp. And I've got 0 0.01 ohms. I'm also going to make a connection onto the pipe work itself. And I've got a reading of 0 0.02 ohms. It's all well and good proving that the protective bonding conductor makes the front of the clamp, but the earth has got to travel through the clamp and make the pipe wet work behind. I recommend if it is tarnished or covered in paint that we use some wire wool in order to brighten up the connection so we can prove that the protective bonding conductor actually is earthing the metal work and not just earth in the clamp. A reading of 0.02 is less than the maximum, which is 0.05. We've proved it is continuous from here, one end disconnected from the MET, to both the clamp and pipe work. We just need to repeat the same process now for the gas, which is not in this location. Therefore, we need a longer wandering lead in order to get out to the gas itself. Let's see how we're going to set that up. Before moving on to the gas, I've ensured I've reconnected my protective bonding conductor for my water. I also confirmed that the clamp is secured against the pipe, as well as the cable secured within the clamp itself. 
point, the I can now move on to the gas. As my gas pipe is, pipe is some away distance from away the from the MET, I'm going to need to use a wandering lead. This is a 20 metre long wandering lead, and I will need to remove the resistance of that lead. So we're going to insert it into the machine. So we're going to take one end and probe it into the machine. The other end is going to have a crocodile clip on it. Take a normal lead and set it in the other half and now remove the resistance of this long 20 meter wandering lead exactly the same as we would our normal leads itself so move it onto ohms as we usually do and let's see what we get it's got a read in in this case flashing less than zero I press the test button once i have a reading of 0 0.69 i press it again I now have a reading of zero. So what's happened now is I've removed the resistance of what now is a 20 meter lead rather than just the normal short leads that we have on the instrument. I can now unwind my wandering lead connecting it onto one end of the protective bonding conductor disconnected and make my connection to the clamp and to the gas pipe. Let's see how we're gonna do that. One end of my wandering lead has been connected to the gas. I've unraveled my lead and I'm now walking down to where the other end is connected to the gas pipe. So I've come out to where so the gas, gas pipe, has its, pipe has its connection to the protective bonding conductor. I'm going to confirm the clamp is secure and so is the conductor. I've also brightened up the pipe work to prove continuity goes from the conductor on the clamp through to the pipe. And I expect a reading no greater than 0.05 of an ohm. Make my connection and I've got on the actual connection to the clamp 0 0.03 ohms. I make my next connection onto the actual pipe work itself. And I've got a reading of 0 0.03 ohms. The readings are below the maximum allowed, which is 0 0.05. I've proved the continuity of the protective bonding conductor. However, before I turn the installation back on, I must confirm I've reconnected both the water and gas protective bonding conductors. I hope this video has been some help. So this is, uh, I'm talking about the protective bonding conductor. How the protective bonding conductor need to be the connected? How to test the protective bonding conductor? So this step we can uh, show in the this uh, this video. So now I'm talking about the uh, how to do the uh, measurement, how to do the verification testing and protective bonding conductor. So uh, this test are uh, also I uh, there are others are uh, video. You also look at the uh, more video. So now we're talking about the how to test the protective bonding conductor. So that bonding conductor lesson knows and the, the video. So this is for the protective bonding conductor and also accessible as a acceptable the system we talk about. And also the uh, this is a uh, video, so you have to read this a uh, bullet another more video. So the video first video is I show you with the by lesson and another four more video four video you need to view. So this is as uh, a testing continuity and a polar these are uh, protective act uh, testing. Testing requirement for the installation. So we have to use it when the getting of the testing on the new installation, when the, any alterations or the addition are made. So then we get to do the sequence of testing by the AS and says that 2000, 2018 session 8. So 2018 session 8, you have to uh, follow it. In this case, uh, we have to do the visual inspection. Also, we have to do this uh, other system test, continue to do the main other data. Other system test for the other added and the equal potential bonus pass. Installation the system test of the installation. Polar connection test of the circuit wiring, also up for do the evidence test, verification of the operation of the recipient current devices. So then you have to view it. In the meantime, uh, this is as a ASN 2008 uh, session A is a verification. So you also have to rule about the verification. So in this case, uh, when carrying out the testing, all the test results are recorded and the records are made for the five years also embodied. So in this case, uh, MEN's are uh, the connection 
uh, has been missed. So the devil that we not, must not miss the and the connection. In the meantime, RCD can be used. So how the RCD are used? Uh, electrical contractors and electrical workers are reminded that why the RCD can be used to achieve the automated disk on your supply. RCD fitted to the circuits are identified only to increment the other measure of basic uh, production. RCD are additional to circuit production. Because of the RCD, we cannot uh, entirely depend on the RCD because RCD are just the uh, additional uh, uh, production. Other productive uh, devices must be done. The operation of circuit production is uh, rel reliant upon the integrity of the MEM connection and the supply new trader PM connector. Therefore, the MEM connection and the PM connector are important aspect. We have to uh, know about the uh, properly measure the MEM connection and PM connector as well. So, in this case, we also have to follow the upper loop emitter. Now, upper loop emitter must not exceed the AZ and the A.1. So, 2018 addition. So, this is the upper loop emitter is also important. It must not be uh, greater than the uh, table 8 by 1 of the AS and as a 3000. So in this case, are protected by radiant MBR, and also the depending on the type of this uh, uh, circuit breaker and fuse, and uh, this is the maximum uh, upper loop evidence. So when we are testing the uh, verification or electric circuit, it must follow the this rule. So this is the way that I am uh, talking about the how the electric rules are must be followed. So therefore, the we have to uh, follow at the ASR three thousand eight. Uh, 3000 maximum upper loop emitter table 8.1. So here will be this uh, energy meter arrangement, also the MEN neutral link service, and also the, this with the artist uh, conductor. data. So here MEN link. So in this case, uh, we have to follow the appropriate uh, side of the uh, protected artist code data across with the class 5 by 5 by 3 by 5 of the uh, AS3000. So this is the 5 by 5 by 3 by 5. So we go look at the 5 by 5 by 3 by 5. So this is the Atinja Bonding Kodata. So I'm protected as a consumer main. Is for the connected part associated with the consumer main or not protected with the short circuit production on supply side? Share with other buy connected or the buy the direct connection to the other such that the ILA has a current carrying capacity not less than the that of the main nuclear conductor. So this is what the across the 5x5x3x5, five 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 five, we have to follow the, the appropriate standard. So this is the 5x5x3x5b. Uh, so 5x5x3x5b. The main adding conductor or the bar in this case across them with the cross 5x5x5x3x5x2 Crossing the area of MEN, 
cannot be less than that of the main nuclear gonada. So then, uh, this uh, arc gonada must not be the less than the uh, nuclear gonada crossing the area. So 5 by 5 by, uh, 5 by 3 by 5 by 2. 5 by 3 by 5 by 2 is here. So this is a side. And we are going to say share we could allow carry a cross five by three by two. Share hey cross in the area. Can we well carry the maximum current? That's maybe required to carry out. So in this case, the share minimum size share not be less than the current carrying capacity of main unit gonada. So this is the important aspect of the, this one. So the other districts are I have to told you about the how the quadratic adding gonada has to be the time. So this is the uh, page one to twelve. So page one to twelve of the cash flow lesson. So the I talk about the how to set up the how to measure the productive ati, how to do the uh, visual inspection, what are the requirements for the productive ati codata, those are the I we're talking about. Here is a uh, outbuilding, also the base we both we have connected to the combines are building. So this is adding of the combined outbuilding must be followed. So this is also the measurement of the adding on the individual outbuilding. Also, that you also need to check uh, see the one video. The new Pepsi Max six hundred mil plastic bottle. 100% recycled. Nice taste towards no waste. What the? Could you do your polarity testing?
R1 representing the resistance of the line conductor, R2 representing the resistance of the CPC. If it does come on and off as we go through the switching sequence, we can also tick the polarity box, and then we can move on to our insulation resistance test once the covers have been reinstalled. So let's get on with the continuity of CPC and the polarity combined test next. So we're going to connect on to our earth terminal, which is securing into position our circuit projected conductors. And we are going on to the switching line within the actual barrel lamp holder. We discussed previously why we're not coming in here. We've only been here seven weeks. So I'm onto my switching line within my battle lamp holder. I'm currently in the on position with a reading of 0 0.54 of an ohm. Hopefully it's going off now. So I'm gone greater than the scale. So I've got full scale deflection. Turn it back on. I've now got slightly less at 0.51. On. Now we've got 0.55 and off again. So I've run through from first switch through and then back again. I don't operate each switch in turn. You turn one off or on, whichever way it is, and go to the next switch, the next switch, and back again. I need to leave the circuit in the on position. So let's turn it on at any switch. And our reading is the highest one we've achieved of 0.57. Six. And we've proved that these switches turn on and off the light fitting itself, so therefore we've proved polarity, but we've still got to prove continuity so you can see at each individual switch. And whichever reading we get, wherever it is, we can one. So we've got about 0.5 for now to have this reading. Let's turn the next. No, 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 Again, we pick the line and the CPC and we get a reading of 0.271. So we have achieved the highest reading in circuit at the lighting point. We've proved polarity by operating the switches and leaving them in the wrong position. We're now ready to move on to our solution test once we've got all the covers back on and ensure that all loads are removed. So let's do that next. So we've got the continuity of CPC and polarity test. We're ready to move on now to our insulation resistance test. As stated before, we need to turn our instrument into the mega ohm scale and set it to 500 volts DC. We've also inserted, as before, our leads into the green and red sections of our mega MFT. Once again, we could have used the blue lead, but we've chosen to use the red and green lead. We're going to short the leads together to ensure that we have continuity of those leads, so we should get a dead short on the insulation resistance test. We have proven that the leads themselves, I said they, they can and snap here without actually seeing them physically snap, they can become disconnected there. So we've proved we have continuity of our leads by shortening them together, and we're ready almost to start our insulation resistance test. We must ensure that our switches have been left on, we did during the continuity test, and we've got, in this case, they're all down. That doesn't need to be the two-way intermediate, the down throw to be on, they can be in any combination of up and down. But we've left them on during the continuity test. We must remove all loads, but the lamp itself needs to be removed before we start the test. And also these sensitive electronic devices. In this case, we've got the RCCB. We must ensure that that is in the off position. And we must ensure the circuit breaker is also off, because we said before the test doesn't know it's going out and do the circuit. Once you pass it back through the circuit breaker and across the bottom of the RCCB. So the supply is isolated. We're ready to do the insulation resistance test. Ah, so we yeah. Yeah. So there's no particular order in which we did the test. So we put first of all onto my earth bar. I'm going to test between that and the top of the circuit breaker, trying to keep my arms out of the way. Press the test button. And we've got a reading of greater than 999 mega ohms, so off the scale of the machine. We go across and move between the earth and neutral bars. Press the test and hold it on. Greater than 999 mega ohms. Now I'm going to go between my neutral and my top of my circuit breaker for the lines, so neutral and line. Once again, I've got a reading greater than 999 mega ohms. We expect the overall insulation resistance of our consumer unit, that's all the circuits, um, to give us a reading greater than 1 mega ohm. Further investigation 
is required where the reading falls below two. Random installation with only one circuit. We expect it to have a fantastic reading for installation resistance. We don't expect the insulation to have deteriorated through time, through age, through sunlight, so UV degradation. Perhaps it's been in, connected to something very hot. We don't expect it to have broken down over time. But a brand new installation, our insulation resistance should be fantastically high, somewhere in the hundreds of megawatts. However, the test is not complete because our installation has two way and two way intermediate switching. So we're going to walk back into the installation now and throw once again both two way switches into the opposite on position. This is Dylan. She's with Vodafone, so she can shop it. So this is a uh, protected test in the system. So we have to uh, follow the appropriate uh, testing uh, method. So I do this day, I talk about the electrical installation, uh, polarity testing, uh, electrical installation, up for the system, I do the system testing. Then we also had to uh, view the uh, first video, and also you had to uh, view the another four video. So today lessons are, uh, we include the Today's lessons are include the for our uh, upper and look at the systems are testing or the productive are being testing. So I give you this uh, uh, overview of verification of the testing procedure. Also, I give you the video and the testing method. And next uh, lecture will be the poor testing.